is our third year doing this event. Uh, and last year, we actually did it via Zoom. I, some of you were part of that. I think we recognized for different things. And it was a different experience as, as much of the last year, 18 months has been. But, but I am just so thankful to be back in person. It's good to see real people. Um, it's my first time meeting some of you outside of a Zoom box. So it's pretty cool to see you in person. Um, but again, I'm Scott Sheeler. I'm the president and CEO of SEFCO. We are so happy to be here this morning. Uh, and I love this event because it brings together construction companies, uh, graduates of our different programs, our K-12 programs, our construction ready programs, uh, all of our partners, uh, teachers, counselors. There's a really diverse group uh, in this room, a group of individuals in this room this morning. And so I love, I love seeing all the different people who make the work of SEFCO possible. So thank you all for being here this morning. Uh, but we are here officially to recognize 18 individuals and companies who are thriving in our industry today, uh, either thriving in construction or they're thriving in the education sector. So we're here to recognize those individuals and companies. Uh, they do come from all different places, um, geographically, uh, all over the state. Uh, but before we recognize our honorees, we want to take a moment to share a little bit about why we created this awards program in the first place. And there is a little bit of a history behind it. So I want to share that with you now. It really started uh, four years ago. Uh, our Vice President of Construction, Betty Jamie Bach, and her team were analyzing the retention rates for all of our graduates. You know, when we place a K-12 graduate or a construction ready graduate, we keep up with them for at least one year after we place them. And she was analyzing that data, and, and we're tracking at about 70% retention rate. Year, which is which is good. It's good in our industry. Uh, and it's good when you benchmark it in similar programs across the country. But you know, 30 percent. We wondered about that 30 percent. Why why isn't that other 30 percent sticking? What's going on? And so we started looking at that and we, we analyzed it. And what we determined was that there are really three reasons why an individual doesn't stick in our industry. And I think this goes for SEPTA graduates, you know, or anybody who comes into the and, and the first reason, as you might imagine, is that a lot of our graduates go out and they don't, they don't uphold their end of the deal, right? They go out and they don't show up on time, they fail a drug screen, they do something and they talk back to the supervisor, um, and they just don't cut. And so you expect a certain percentage of people to be that way. And so that does happen uh, in the case of some of our graduates. But then we also have graduates who go out on job sites and decide that construction is not for them. You know, it's too hot, it's too cold, it's too wet, it's too early. Uh, they decide that, you know, even though we tell them all this in, in class, right? All of our teachers do a good job explaining it. It's a whole different story when you actually get out there on a job site, right? And so that, that happens as well. But it was the third one that really caught our attention, and it was the one that we felt like we could do more about. It. And it's this. It turns out that sometimes it's actually the employers who are not upholding their end of the deal. And what we mean by that is they put their workers in dead-end jobs. They put them under the direction of poor supervisors. And this is, this is feedback we get from our students. And they don't offer them any type of career path or any type of long-term vision for success you know, in terms of their personal uh, goals and aspirations. And so we said, you know, we know that there are companies who do a great job of that who do a great job of making sure they have good supervisors, make, making sure they offer good career pathways. And we said, let's lift up those companies. Let's make a big deal of the companies who are doing it right. Um, and, and along the way, maybe we can help some of these other companies do a better job. Because ultimately, that's what it's going to take to solve our industry's labor shortage, is we've got to, obviously, we've got to do a better job of recruiting and training more people, and that's what SEPCA is focused on. But we also have to look internally. We have to look in the mirror as an industry and say, are we doing all we can do to retain the people that we attract into our industry? And I realized this morning, I'm preaching to the choir. If you're sitting in this room, you're doing a great job. That's, that's why you're here, to be recognized. But I want to lift up the fact, and, and I'm sure you all know this, that there are, for every company that's in this room, there are 10 or 20 companies that are not in this room who are not doing a good job of retaining the people that, uh, that we're bringing into the industry. So I want to lift that up and, and just share with you that that's a big reason we created this, uh, this program in the first place. And so 
What happened there was interesting. So just as we were analyzing this data, we got an email from one of our great partners. It's another organization called CareerWise. They're based in downtown Atlanta. And they asked us if we would be interested in partnering with them on a job quality grant. And, and by the way, that's what this is called in, the, in our world, in the nonprofit world. It's called job quality. How do we make our jobs better quality jobs? And it, it, was, it was like divine intervention. You know, just as we were thinking about this, wondering what we can do, we, we have this grant uh, come our way with, with Atlanta Career Rise. And naturally, uh, we agreed to partner. We applied for the grant. It was with the Prudential Foundation back in 2018. And, and we received the grant. And what it allowed us to do was work with several companies to really analyze this and look at what works and what doesn't work. And, and the other thing it allowed us to do was it allowed us to create this awards program that we're doing this morning. This was, this was four years ago that the whole process started, and this year is our, officially our third awards program. So that's a quick history of how we got here and why we do this in the first place. Um, as you all know, the, the labor shortage is well documented. Um, we need about 30,000 new construction workers each year uh, over the next at least two years, and that's to keep up with our current demand and to keep up with all the baby boomers who are retiring from our industry. And I was talking to someone earlier, it, it just seems to be getting worse. It seems like we're getting more jobs, and it seems like more people are having trouble getting more people to do those jobs. And so it makes the work of SEFCA, you know, all the more important. So what we, um, we recognize that attracting and training workers is part of the solution, but as an industry, as I said earlier, we have to do a better job of lifting up highlighting and celebrating our existing field of employees. So that's what this event is largely about. We want to lift up the companies who are doing a good job, but we also want to lift up the individuals in our industry who are doing a great job uh, in our industry currently. So as so we're going to celebrate the companies and, and we're also going to celebrate companies who actively engage with their local schools because that's another important element in this whole puzzle is you know, if, if you want to get more young people into your company, you have to get engaged with your local schools, with, te with construction teachers, counselors. And again, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but I want to mention that so that you all know kind of the history and the purpose of this event. But we're lifting up individuals and companies who are leading by example and making a difference in our industry and in our communities. And we would not be here this morning, and the CAP Crack World Champion Awards program would not exist without the vision and leadership I do want to recognize Atlanta Career Rise and the National Fund for Workforce Solutions. They were two of our key partners very early on as we were creating this program. Um, so our next speaker on the agenda actually had a family emergency this morning, so he's not able to join us. His name is John Helton. But I want to mention him um, because he is, hopefully many of you know him, he's such a great leader in the workforce development space, but he's the executive director of Career Rise. And prior to that, he was the CEO of uh, Cobb Works, which is the, uh, the, part, the group that we partnered with to start construction ready here in Cobb County. So I just want to, I want to lift up John. I want to, if you could say a prayer for John. I know he's dealing with a family uh, emergency this morning. Um, he's a great guy. If you get a chance to meet him, uh, do so and, um, and, and work with him anytime you get an opportunity. So what we will do now, we're going to just jump right into recognizing our and what I want to tell you is when you come up, when you're accepting your award, you are free to say a few words. Um, or you're free to accept your award and step off the stage. We're very loose and informal. Um, we do ask uh, Mike Dunn for no 30 minute speeches or anything like that. Uh, but uh, now, just if you do speak, you know, keep, keep it short. But, um, but you are free to say whatever you want to say. You know, if you want to thank you know, anyone. Uh, in the process, that would be awesome. So, um, on to our main event. So, our first award, and everyone should have a program, by the way, and you're quickly going to be following the award of this program pretty closely. Uh, our first awardee this morning is our K-12 Graduate of the Year. And our K-12 Graduate of the Year award recognizes a graduate of a high school construction program who is working, advancing, and providing Construction industry today. And our first graduate of the year for 2021 is Ms. Samantha Bodecker with Frito Lay. I understand Samantha uh, cannot be here this morning. I, I want to ask uh, Luke, actually, if you wouldn't mind coming up and accepting the award. Uh, Luke 
Fletcher uh, was uh, on, uh, was a teacher. She was actually Samantha's teacher. He's now working with Stefka. But let me just say a few words about Samantha. She's a 2021 graduate of the Houston County Career Academy in Warner Robins, which is where Luke used to teach. Uh, she completed the school's industrial systems pathway, uh, dual enrolled at Central Georgia Technical College, and participated in a youth apprenticeship program that matched her with Macon's uh, Spear and Associates electrical contractors. In just one semester, Samantha worked more than 200 hours and earned valuable experience in the field as she helped Spear Electrical wire a new fire department building in Centerville, Georgia. Samantha says, the biggest reason I got into the steel trades is because I love to work with my hands and I enjoy learning how things work. I always chose to be outside helping my dad build different items and fixing things around the house. Samantha participated in the Skills USA National Signing Day in 2021, during which she interviewed and was hired into Frida Lay's cadet program at the company's Perry, Georgia location, at its largest plant in the world. Uh, Sandy Collier, Houston County Career Academy's Youth Apprenticeship Coordinator, says Samantha has a wonderful attitude and work ethic. She will be very successful at Frida Lay. Please join me in congratulating our 2021 K 12 Graduate of the Year, Ms. Samantha Bodecker. Graduate of the Year for 2021 is Mr. Kavion Jones with Annie Johnson Company. Uh, Kavion is a 2019 graduate of Atlanta's Cross Keys High School, where he was a student in instructor Calvin Gray's Instruction Pathway class. And I'm so happy to see Mr. Gray here with us this morning. Calvin, good to see you. Um, but one day during Kavion's senior year at Cross Keys, Annie Johnson Company's Edwin Para visited the class to talk about construction careers and present a drywall workshop. Remember, we talked about getting engaged with your local schools. This was, this was the beginning of that. Uh, and it's something uh, Edwin does on a regular basis. But Kavion was hooked after Edwin came into the program. It, and this is what Kavion says. He says, experiencing that workshop fueled my career. I'm not sure what direction my life would have gone had I not found this focus and direction for my future. From that moment, I knew exactly what I wanted to do in life. Soon after that, Kavion participated in a SkillsUSA career signing day and accepted an entry-level laborer role with Annie Johnson that he began shortly after graduation. Within a few months, he entered the company's carpentry apprenticeship program. Kavion is on track to complete that program in December of this year. I started two weeks after my 18th birthday, and since day one, I've been having the time of my life out there, Kavion says. If you put effort into something, you're going to be rewarded for it in return, especially at Annie Johnson. It's been like a family for me, instead of just a boss-employee relationship. There are guys I work with who really care about me, and they want to make sure I succeed. Edwin Parra describes Kavion as an exceptional employee. He has maintained consistent dedication and effort in advancing in our trade. His overwhelming positive attitude and optimism helped him consistently stand out from his peers and have garnered him much respect and friendships. Please join me in congratulating our 2021 K-12 Graduate of the Year, Mr. Kavion Jones. Skyscrapers out downtown, and it's just been 
amazing, you know, everything you could ever think of. And I'm truly honored to be here today. Thank you. Thank you, Kenya. Our next award this morning is our K-12 Teacher of the Year. So behind every k there's a great teacher in these high school construction classes. And so that's what this next award is about. But our K-12 Teacher of the Year award recognizes a Georgia teacher who excels not only in teaching students how to build, but also in inspiring students to pursue a career in the construction industry. Our first K-12 Teacher of the Year for 2021 is Mr. Greg Harrell of Bainbridge High School. Greg Harrell is beginning his 21st year as a teacher at Bainbridge High School where hundreds of students have benefited from his enthusiasm in sharing employable, employability job skills. This year, Greg was the overall winner in our Construction Workforce Impact Awards, reporting more than double the placements than any other teacher. Uh, Seth is Amy Wilhoyt, who works closely with teachers across the state, had this to say about Greg. Mr. Harrell is a rock star teacher who has a passion for helping students in South Georgia. He is truly leaving a legacy for the next generation through the impacts he is making and inspiring students to join the movement. We're so grateful for these extraordinary impacts and for the way Mr. Harrell is changing lives every day. This impact award was created to recognize teachers like him. Greg's fiance, Victoria, offers some keen insights into Greg's relationship with his students. She says, I've never seen someone connect with students like he does. He treats them like his own children. He helps young people get connected with construction employers, and he's also helped kids with getting the PPE they need to start their new jobs. He is focused on placing all of his graduates in jobs that they will love and getting them set up for success. He loves people and puts his heart into everything he does. Please join me in congratulating our 2021 K-12 Teacher of the Year, Mr. Greg Harrell. Hey guys, I've been, been in education for 20 years. It's kind of easy to get into a rut, just doing the same old, same old every day. Um, this self-care kind of impact has been a lot to me. Um, I had no idea just the impact and the, the, uh, the effects that I've had on students' lives over the years, just going back and tracing and, and you know, wondering where they're at now. So for the past several years, I've had an opportunity to, to, to touch bases with kids that normally I probably would not have. I, I put them in jobs and just wondered, you know, where they're at now. So um, with that, I, I owe a lot of you know appreciation to the SEPCA team for, for for you know going out and, and, and getting this grant and, and awarding teachers for the jobs that they do. You know, we're selling us a certain state salary and you know, no matter how good or how bad you are at what you do, you're gonna all make the same. So this has been a this has been a bonus opportunity and I certainly appreciate everything that SEPCA, Luke, Zach, Amy, Matthew, and I, I know I'm leaving out a, a lot, Scott. Um, I appreciate everything that you guys have done. Uh, it means a, a more than you'll ever know. Uh, last year I was uh, involved in an extremely horrific accident to life um, I was told my arm was going to be amputated. I fought for months and months to save it. And um, got home and just had a, you know, a, a overload of bills and how am I going to pay this on the very uh, teacher's salary? And um, with, with help from the good Lord above and um, you know, lots of prayers and, and just being very blessed that, that I have full strength. I play golf four or five times a week and my bill actually was within $100 of my impact money for last year. Uh, great. You know, thank God for for opportunities and blessings, but for also state health insurance. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but my out-of-pocket experience for my whole injury in six or eight months of rehab was in with one hundred dollars of, of what my impact money was last year. So that was really uh, significant in my life last year. Uh, I, I thank Victoria; she pushes me. Uh, 
It's not all, it's not all the roses and, and blessings that I get from her because I'm on the phone all the time with, with employers. And, I mean, I, I'm the contact guy for employees in our part of the country. And, um, and but she, she definitely pushes me, hey, it, you know, all the way up here yesterday, you got this kid that needs a job, let's get him a job. So we, we, we do that together. Here. So truly a team effort. So Jim, thank you so much for all your help over the years and congratulations on your part as well. Thank you all around. Thank you, Greg. Our next K-12 Teacher of the Year for 2021 is Mr. Jim Steele with Harris County High School. When Jim Steele joined the faculty of Harris County High School in 2018, the school's construction program had been dormant for eight years. In the relatively short time since then, it is thriving with dozens of young men and women excited about construction and demonstrating their skills with impressive showings and competition. In 2020, for example, Harris County Skills USA team dominated its regional construction competition with five first place finishes and one runner up. In the state championships that followed, Jim's program logged three wins plus one second place and three third place finishes. Jim says, when our students can compete and demonstrate their skills and knowledge, they build their confidence and prepare themselves for the workplace. Despite the restrictions caused by COVID-19, my students are excelling in their abilities and knowledge, and I'm extremely proud of them. On February 6th of this year, at the Trade and Industrial Educators of Georgia Virtual Conference, it was announced that the Harris County High School Construction Program had achieved CTAE industry certification. Harris County High Principal Tyler Dunn said, this certification is most impressive because it was achieved in such a short amount of time. We congratulate both Mr. Steele and the students for achieving this accomplishment for Harris County High School and the school district. Programs such as these open doors for future employability for our students, in turn supporting our local economy and impacting our local community. Seth's Matthew White says, Jim Steele has a spirit that exemplifies the essence of a career and technical education teacher. His love for creating career opportunities for his students is exceeded only by his faith and love for his family. As old school as they come, Jim doesn't let technology advancements and the necessity of change deter him from his goal of program improvement for the sake of his students. We could very easily solve the problem of a skills gap in the workforce if we could find a way to put the Jim Steele into every school in Georgia that didn't already have one. Please join me in congratulating our 2021 K-12 Teacher of the Year, Mr. Jim Steele.
of careers in construction and connect them with career opportunities. Our K-12 Pipeline Employer of the Year for 2021 goes to C.W. Matthews. Now in its 75th year of operation, Marietta C.W. Matthews has earned a reputation for world-class road, bridge, and other infrastructure projects, including uh, runway and roadway improvement projects at Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport, site prep for the construction of Atlantic Station, and the repair, as we all know here in Atlanta, in just 44 days of the I-85 bridge uh, collapse at Piedmont Road after its collapse in 2017. The company's success is due in no small part to what company president Dan Garcia calls a tradition of nurturing leadership. Almost all of our top management have come up through the ranks, Dan says. To that end, CW Matthews invests deeply in developing young talent through high school and college summer inter internships, as well as high school work-based learning opportunities. The company works hard to build relationships with local high school construction programs and regularly holds signing days complete with personalized C.W. Matthews jerseys. In the past year, SEPTA has received more than 40 reports from teachers and other partners noting students who have worked with C.W. Matthews in some capacity. SEPTA's Amy Wilhoit says, our partnership with C.W. Matthews has been amazing, and we are so grateful for all Jeremy Whitaker does to continuously provide opportunities for youth in Georgia. Jeremy Whitaker, a former high school construction teacher himself, leads this relationship building effort as C.W. Matthews Recruitment and Development Manager. In a recent interview with ConstructionEquipmentGuy.com, Jeremy said, schools need industry partnerships and we need them, so it just takes us reaching out and taking the time to build those ongoing relationships. We at C.W. Matthews want to be involved in what's going on in the schools, not just at career fairs, because that's where the deep, meaningful relationships are made. Please join me in congratulating our 2021 K-12 Pipeline Employer of the Year, C.W. Matthews. And this, by the way, is Mr. Jeremy Whitaker. Or both middle schools, right? Agenda says high schools. 
and we're going to give them a little bit of an award. We've already given their impact checks. So hopefully you've received those. Your reward checks. Okay. Won't be handing those out this morning. Um, but this year's uh, Re 3 Construction Silver Impact Award recipient is Dr. Katherine Roberts. Dr. Roberts is a counselor at Lovejoy High School who has worked to identify 11th and 12th grade students with an interest and an aptitude in the construction industry to deliver, to deliver rigorous career readiness activity uh, to students. So I want to recognize Dr. Roberts at this time. This year's R3 Construction Gold Impact Award recipient is Jonathan Phillips. Jonathan, a counselor at Harris County High School, worked with identified students to bolster the high school to construction industry pipeline. As a result of Jonathan's work, 38 students were placed in dual enrollment opportunities at Columbus Technical College, and 13 of those were placed in work-based learning internships in a construction-related field and 55 also earned credentials of value. So I want to recognize Mr. Jonathan Phillips. This year's R3 Construction Platinum Impact Award recipient is Bridget Zakovich. Bridget conducted her re three construction work with students at the Cab High School of Technology. Bridget worked with students identified as a high fit for the construction industry to provide career development exposure to students via guest speakers from the Atlanta Electrical Contractors Association, C.W. Matthews, and Georgia Power. Students learned work readiness skills, financial literacy, job application skills, relationship building skills, and career placement options. Through Bridget's work, 44% of her students were placed and 15 earned credentials of value. One student also received a $5,000 Home Depot scholarship. Uh, Ms. Bridget is a coach. middle school teachers at this time. And this year's RE3 Construction Circle of Excellence Impact Award recipient is Heather Pazella. Heather, a counselor at Red Top Middle School, worked with a team to deliver high-level and innovative career development to students. Students who participated in the Home Improvement Career Readiness Group were able to try on construction careers and learn valuable life skills in the process. As a result of Heather's work, 64% of her students in, in her group earned the tape measure credential, 46% earned the step ladder safety credential, and 33% earned both the tape measure and step ladder safety credentials. In total, students who participated in the home improvement group earned more than 100 credentials. Ms. Heather Pazell. This year's R3 Construction Honorable Mention Impact Award recipient is Rod Metcalf. Rod, along with his high school counseling intern, Mallory, conducted their RE3 construction work at Woodstock Middle School. Rod and Mallory worked to identify students with high interest and aptitudes for careers in the construction industry. Through their program, students were exposed to industry experts, construction technology, and a construction site. 100% of the students in Rod's RE3 construction group earned the self the tape measure credential, and 60% earned single extension ladder certification. Mr. Rod. Congratulations to all of our counselors. Thank you all so much for all you do. We're excited about our work ahead.
All right, so our next award this morning is our Construction Ready Graduate of the Year. For, for those of you who don't know, Construction Ready is set as an adult training program um, for, for people ages 18 and older. So this award recognizes a Construction Ready graduate who is working, advancing, and thriving in the construction industry. This year, we received so many quality applications, we are recognizing four deserving graduates. Our first Construction Ready Graduate of the Year is Ms. Marshanda Farrell of ABC Traffic Solutions. Marshanda Farrell graduated from Construction Ready at Westside Works in 2017, was hired as a flagger for road safe, road, road safe traffic systems, and within six months was promoted to an administrative position in the company's Conyers office. After two years, her supervisor announced he would be starting his own business, so Marshanda worked for RoadSafe for another six months and later joined her old boss at his new company, ABC Traffic Solutions. Since July 2019, Marshanda wears many hats as the administrator, hiring manager, uh, and, and human resources person for ABC Traffic Solutions, and has even recently attended hiring fairs to recruit construction-ready graduates. That's one of our favorite things, is we love seeing graduates of our, of our program come back to hire additional graduates for our program. The Construction Ready program at Westside Works gave me a second chance at a new career, Marshanda says. It was a complete lifestyle change for me. I never imagined being in this position. I was at a standstill before. Construction Ready helped me by giving me the skills and the credentials to get back to work. Please join me in congratulating our 2021 Construction Ready Graduate of the Year, Ms. Marshanda Farrell. Chicago-based general contractor with an office in Metro Atlanta. 
Ujamaa encourages career growth and development by providing its craft professionals with industry-recognized training and support and empowering them to gain broad experience in all phases of the construction project. In Donald's case, in addition to learning the many aspects of general contracting, he was able to take a deep dive into the business of estimating when a staff member in that department moved on and he was asked to fill the role on a long-term basis for the Atlanta office. Sandy Henry at Ujamaa says, Donald is very conscientious, always comes to work with a smile, and is quick to assist when asked. He will explain construction concepts with you and wants to know what you get. That he wants to know that you get it. He is a joy to work with. Ujamaa's culture also places great personal responsibility on its employees, and Donald has eagerly embraced that culture. He says, I've been on past jobs where something goes wrong and the work stops while everybody is looking for, for someone to blame. With a general contractor, I've learned that we need to figure out how to keep the job moving. If you're holding up a job, then the work's not getting done. Please join me in congratulating our 2021 Construction Ready Graduate of the Year, Mr. Donald Grant. Mark about known each other about 20 years now. Um, 
um, but we've been working closely together for about eight, and so I really appreciate all that you do and all that HBNX does to make the construction ready program possible. Thank you, we appreciate you. So our next graduate, our next construction ready graduate of the year is Mr. Michael Hood of Skyline Forming. Michael Hood graduated from Construction Ready at Westside Works in 2015 and was hired by Skyline Forming, a Cobb County-based commercial uh, concrete company. He has remained with the company since then, gaining experiences along the way on high-profile high projects such as Mercedes-Benz Stadium and a dormitory for George State University students, and he is now a certified rigger for the company. Michael also continued his skills training in 2020 by enrolling in SEPCA's Construction Ready Plus program, which offers advanced skills and training and seven in industry-recognized credentials. That additional training, along with his experience in the field, is a combination that he says will take me to new heights in my career. During the course of his Construction Ready Plus training, Michael was promoted to foreman at Skyline Forming. Michael also discovered another benefit of his construction career. He says, he says it's helped him become a better father. My children look at me different now, he says. I'm a better role model. It's helped me take better care of them. I can tell people my story, and they will actually listen because it's positive. Please join me in congratulating our 2021 Construction Ready Graduate of the Year, Mr. Michael Hood of Skyline Forming. Serious while we're young. 
And he asked a question to one of the young students today. He said, you think you've got time? He said, keep playing around with life and time is going to run out. He said, look at this guy. You think this guy got time? And he looked at me and said, you got time? <laughs> and it doesn't know me. I really don't have any more time. <laughs> For real decisions. I mean, you either got to deal with something and stick with it. Or you got to move on. You know, you're going to miss out. Uh, I want to thank him for what he said that day, but I also want to pin back to what you were saying about the three parts, the individual not going back to what he was and actually loving the work that he's doing, but in my uh, career, it's actually been the company that have stuck behind me. They've been very, uh, with Holy Construction, they've been very patient with me. Uh, our culture deals with helping people to grow inside of the company. They could have just stuck a broom in my hand. I don't know why they might have invested an uh, old convict with not many years left, uh, but they did. And they stuck with me, they were patient with me, they helped me to move forward. They actually are hands on to where we all know each other. Uh, and that's important to me. Uh, we were doing our culture study and we get out of your way. And one thing that stood with me a lot was that at that time I was under Mr. Dan Simpson. And Dan would literally listen to each of the employees, regardless of what the complaint was against him. Before he made a decision, he would wait. And my voice meant something to him. Uh, I get a chance to tell my side of the story before he make a decision, because I was very scared that he would lose his job. If I lose his job, I don't have anywhere else to go. Uh, but they listen. Uh, Mr. Scott, they're actually there with you. They know you. Can nobody come and tell you that? I'm talking about your good and your bad. Nobody can come and tell anything against you, and they weigh the decision just off of what they heard. They know their individuals, they know their employer, and they give you the opportunity to excel. So I just thank God for the company that I'm with. I bless each and every one of you for your commitments that you made. May God continue to help us. Construction Ready Employer of the Year Award recognizes employers for hiring, retaining, and developing our Construction Ready graduates. Our Construction Ready Employer of the Year Award for 2021 is Manning Johnson Company. Manning Johnson Company is a specialty construction contractor in eight markets across the United States, including Atlanta. The company regularly hires from SEPCA's K-12 pipeline and Construction Ready programs and demonstrates an extraordinary commitment to workforce development through an innovative joint training program. One component of the company's program is paid in-house training in which Annie Johnson Management assigns mentors to train apprentices on the job. The other component is an after-hours training class provided by local carpenters unions through which employees can earn credentials that count toward journeyman certification. Annie Johnson also allocates time and resources to ensure that apprentices are evaluated on a weekly basis. Mentors, foremen, and super, supervising journeymen help employees identify areas for improvement, as well as areas where they're exceeding expectations. Employees look forward to this feedback and it helps them progress. Edwin Parr, a operations manager for Annie Johnson's Atlanta office, says, when employers start to realize the power they have by investing in individuals, I think that's when everybody wins. Without programs like Construction Ready and Annie Johnson's training program, some employees are less likely to succeed. But today, they are professionals with a passion for what they do, and that translates to a much more productive and local, productive and loyal employee. So in the end, everybody wins. Please join me in congratulating Annie Johnson Company as SEPCA's 2021 Construction Ready Employer of the Year and accepting the award on behalf of Annie Johnson as Edwin Carr. I really can't say enough about the impact 
than teachers had in my life. And um, when I say teachers, that includes trainers like we have in construction ready. We've had the privilege of working with construction ready really since its inception uh, about eight years ago. Today we have foremen that graduated from that program. Um, while we're being honored for this and we're grateful for this award, the real reward has come kind of what uh, Jeremy said earlier, changing lives. You know, we're known for building buildings. Unfortunately, those buildings won't last forever. They have a timeline. The one thing that will last forever is an impact that each of, every one of us have the opportunity to make in the lives that we touch. We're all blessed with this opportunity. And we, uh, obviously, each one, each one of you are here because you use this blessing to bless others. Um, it all goes back to service. You know, I recognize this award, but really, you guys uh, deserve the award for what y'all have done. Um, I want to leave y'all with a quote for, from uh, Martin Luther King Jr. He said, he that is greatest among you will be your servant. And each of you have served your community, so thank you all. I'm Matt Hancock, Vice President of Andy Johnson. I just want to thank specifically Ed Lepar for his inspiration and providing inspiration for guys like um, Kavion and Mr. Gray for giving direction and having those programs. And Scott uh, and everybody at Seth go, um, do a wonderful job. And uh, Edwin does a fantastic job getting out there recruiting, promoting our industry, promoting our industry as a whole and, um, and our company and really provide a clear career path for individuals like KD on uh, guys like Cor Corey and Bolton that takes a whole team, you know, construction manager, all of our superintendents and foremen who really provide the feedback to the individuals and, and follow their career path. I don't just give them a broom and or a screw gun and forget about it, but they actually follow up and um, want to see it through. So thank you. Thank you. Our next award this morning is our Craft Pro Champion Award. Our Craft Pro, a Craft Pro Champion is a company that is a leader in the industry and has a long track record of workforce development strategies that promote field career, field level career progression and provide workers with accessible training and skills development opportunities. Our Craft Pro Champion for 2021 is McCarthy Building Companies. McCarthy Building Companies is one of the oldest and largest commercial construction companies in the U.S. Founded as a family-owned business in 1864. I, I paused when I saw it. I was like, really? During the Civil War? I mean, that's, that's awesome. Um, McCarthy became 100% employee-owned in 2002. This ownership culture, together with the firm's core purpose to be the best builder in America, encourages continuous improvement. McCarthy is an NCCER accredited organization that supports its craft employees with ongoing training, including craft-specific peer group meetings, specialized technical training in the field, and much more. The firm's employee owners strive to develop to their full potential and are motivated to help others to do the same all in the support of delivering an exceptional experience for clients and business partners. McCarthy Building Companies was inducted in 2016 into Training Magazine's Training Top 10 Hall of Fame, which recognizes companies that hold top 10 spots in a series of rankings for four consecutive years. Mike Boland, McCarthy's chairman and CEO, says, investing in our employees' personal and professional development is a direct investment in our future. Our employees are better equipped to deliver world-class solutions for our clients and industry partners, and we are better positioned to offer our employee owners satisfying and rewarding careers. Please join me in congratulating McCarthy Building Companies as SEPCA's 2021 Craft Pro Champion of the Year, accepting the award on behalf of McCarthy Building Companies is Scott Lawrence.
mean, suffice it to say we are in lockstep uh, with your goals and missions to promote and train folks to, to have you know, long and lasting careers in such a, a great industry. Um, also, I think it's wonderful what you all are doing as far as, you know, uh, exposure for the young folks in the K-12 program. Uh, it, it will bode well for us all in the future. Um, you know, I'm McCarthy, we, we see our craft professionals as a critical component of our success, of our projects, and our company. Um, I think this week we've got about 950 craft professionals on the payroll in our southern region alone. Uh, with that, we have dedicated resources for recruiting, uh, for training, uh, for HR support and benefits. Uh, Estella Cisneros is joining us here today to represent that group. Um, so appreciate everything you all do. Um, and then last but not least, uh, you know, our frontline managers and superintendents uh, several here today with us that take so much of their time uh, and energy every day working with our folks, helping them, coaching them, training them, uh, identifying those uh, you know, that have an opportunity to grow. Uh, that's easily been one of the most rewarding things that I've, I've had in my career is watching folks grow and develop from an apprentice you know, to a carpenter, to a foreman, to a superintendent, and beyond. Uh, so, Katie on and others, keep doing what you're doing. The sky's the limit, and uh, thank you for this award. All right, our next award this morning is our Leadership in Industry Award. Our first Leadership and Industry Award for 2021, this is our first year doing this award, goes to Mr. Mike Dunham of AGC Georgia. As CEO of Associated General Contractors of Georgia, or AGC Georgia, Mike Dunham heads the leading professional trade association representing the commercial construction industry in our state. Mike has spent his entire career with AGC chapters across the country, beginning with the Northeast Louisiana Contractors Association, which hired him immediately after graduation from college. He worked there for eight years before moving on to a larger AGC chapter in Jacksonville, Florida. Six years after that, in 1995, Mike moved to Atlanta and joined the AGC Georgia staff. At AGC, at AGC Georgia, Mike and his team work at the national, state, and local levels to protect the interests of its member firms and help build a sustainable construction talent pipeline in Georgia. That means building and maintaining relationships at the state capitol and in government offices, working with construction teachers in schools, and working with industry professionals throughout the state. Under Mike's leadership, AGC Georgia was a key founding partner of SEFCA more than 20 years ago, and to this day, his team at AGC Georgia is constantly innovating to attract the next generation of construction professionals with programs like the AGC Skills Challenges, which take place every year in every corner of our state. Through good economic times and bad ones, AGC Georgia's Mike Dunham is a constant and relentless champion of construction workforce development. Mike, uh, all of us at SEFCO want you to know how much we appreciate you, and we, and we joke with Mike about a lot of things, but we are so appreciative of you. And, and, and for those of you that don't know, just on a personal note, Mike actually hired me into this industry back in 96, 1996. So I've been in the industry for 25 years. But I started my career in the industry with AGC Georgia. Mike hired me. I remember like it was yesterday. We were both a little bit younger. Um, but Mike, I, I've shared with him, you know, on a personal level, he's been like a father over the years to me, and I just appreciate his support personally and just all that you do uh, for our industry and specifically for workforce development. It, you know, this is a, an issue that's easy to forget about in bad economic times, but Mike has never forgotten about this. In fact, he he ramps up his efforts. When the economy goes down, Mike, Mike takes off with workforce development. He, and he doubles down, triples down on it. So I've just been so impressed with that over the years. But, but, but thank you for all you do, and I just ask that you all join me in congratulating the recipient of our 2021 Leadership and Industry Award, Mr. Mike Dunham.
I've got this thing supposed to be over at nine, so I'm going to save a little time for the next program. Uh, I'll tell you a funny story about Scott working for me, and we became a partner. Tommy Holder uh, was leading SEPTA at that moment and got ABC to make a commitment to be a big partner. And so we made a substantial financial investment. And Tommy turned right around and took our money and hired my staff member away from me. <laughs> I said, geez, Tommy, if I'm not just going to call him a staff member, I might have been a little hesitant. But it's been an incredible relationship. Uh, we cannot get done what we need to do in the workforce without the work of SEPTA. Uh, AGC plays a small role in that. Uh, I'm happy to be a cheerleader for that. You know, my challenge to my membership from the very day was to get out behind the damn desk and go shake the hand of the instructor. I was just in uh, Savannah Monday night with of industry leaders, and I said, folks, these instructors need to be a part of your team. You got your project managers, your superintendents, your, your labor force. At the company picnic, we don't have the instructors in our local construction programs there, too. We're missing a key element of how we're going to be successful in the future. We're working with the counselors now to help them understand our industry so they can better relate to the folks that we need to know about it and get the career path things started. So, we got so many moving parts, we can be up for a long time talking about the success that we're going to have in the future. Uh, but this is the long-term game. We're going to be here for a long time. We can't give up on it. The downtown economy is the challenging part, but every time it happens, we come out the other side and we want to write problems and we don't have the people in place to take off again. So we've got to continue to know that we can't take a foot off the gas. We've got to work on this issue because it's so important AGC's got two models. We're here to make the better contractors be successful, the best they can be, but we're also here to make a better industry. And without working on the workforce issue, it just isn't possible. Thank you for this honor and thank you for uh, this award. Uh, AGC Georgia is in this fight for the long term. Thank you. This program launched for fifth graders at Mountain Park in the 2020-2021 school year and is expanding to include second grade students in the new school year. SEPCA Program Development Specialist Clint Pruitt serves as the program's fifth grade instructor and had this to say about Stacy. Stacy is a principal who has really broken the mold for construction education at the elementary level. She has been an outstanding champion and supporter for both SEPCA and me personally she allowed me to come into her school and pilot the fifth, fifth grade program. Keep in mind that this was done in the middle of a pandemic. In fact, I was the only visitor allowed in the school who wasn't a Fulton County employee, and it was so Stacy could bring the construction class to those fifth graders. Ms. Perlman took on every obstacle to getting this program into her school, including fighting for it at the district level and rearranging her fifth grader schedule to make it work. She also was able to provide additional funding and administrative support. She promoted it to her staff and parents, and she has continued to champion the program by, petit by petitioning Fulton County for an additional teacher and choosing SEFCA to expand it to the second grade. Stacy is, is an absolutely amazing partner who has truly paved the way as we strive to provide this type of program throughout the state and ultimately throughout the country. Please join me in congratulating our 2021 Leadership and Education Award recipient, Ms. Stacey Perlman. All
SEPTA, first of all, for bringing this opportunity to our school. Um, our fifth graders, we had 150 fifth graders this year who got an opportunity that 10 and 11 year olds don't normally have. Um, it was very exciting. It was also really special to us because during, as Scott mentioned, such a hard school year and there were so many things that we couldn't do and so many no's and so many hard things. We had this awesome, brand new, exciting program that we could hold up and say like, but we're doing this. Like this is something that we can all latch onto and feel positive about, which was exciting. Um, and especially for our students, like seeing students like Kayon and people who have been successful way later, it's exciting to see students like my own fifth grader who got that opportunity this year at 10 and 11 years old to do something that other kids aren't doing. I want to thank Zach Fields for asking us if we would do with this, which, uh, yes, yes, more yes. So it was super exciting. And um, seeing Zach start the construction program at Roswell High School, which is our feeder school, many years ago when he was there, I was like, oh, this is really cool. It's so great our kids get to do this. Never imagining that we'd be doing it at our school. Um, years later, so thank you for that opportunity. Um, thank you to Kayla Stewart, who's our school board member of Fulton County Schools, has invested in CTAE and is now providing us a teacher to continue this program with first, second, through fifth graders. So we'll have 600 kids at Mount Park doing construction next year. Um, so thank you, Kayla. And Clint Pruitt, um, he did the whole thing. He did all the work, he had to leave. Um, but he, this is his award. He came to our school, it was, he taught six classes, which were each 45 minutes, but he was there like half the day, preparing materials, writing lessons, working with the teachers. Um, he was there on the days that we forgot to tell him that we were remote. He was there um, <laughs> teaching, he learned to teach simultaneously on the computer and in person, just like all of our other teachers, and he had a whole other real job. So he really deserved this award, he was amazing, and he's continuing to work with our program and with our new teacher to help expand it to all um, four grades. We're just super excited. Thank you so much. So I'll just add just a tiny bit of commentary here because some of this may be new for some of you. You know, for the first several years of SEPA's existence, we focused on high schools because that's we knew that students would be graduating soon and we want to get them as soon as we can. Um, I really credit uh, Zach Fields and his vision to say, hey, you gotta get them, you gotta get to them before high school. And high school's great, and we're gonna obviously continue to support high schools, but you gotta get to them in middle school and even elementary school. That may sound crazy that we're talking to second graders, fifth graders, teaching them how to use a hammer, but it is an awesome thing to see, to see these classes. And I would encourage you, um, we do we do another program called Little Builders, where we actually teach second graders how to build small projects. And we do it all via Zoom. It was one of those innovative pivots we did during COVID. We send the Home Depot, you know, you all probably been to Home Depot on a Saturday morning where the kids are building things. We send those kids out to the schools and, and we work with the kids in the classroom to build these projects. And a lot of these kids say, hey, this is my first time ever swinging a hammer. You know, and, and, they, and they love it. They love building things. And they take that object back to their homes and they set them up in a really proud place in their parent in their home. So you know, it's powerful when you stop and think about it, it makes a long a lot of sense. Um, and it's an investment we're gonna to continue to make and we're so thankful for Stacy and that partnership and blazing the trail and making it happen and thankful to Zach Fields, our VP of our K-12 work for having the vision. He calls it he calls it vertical alignment. I don't know if anybody knows exactly what that means, but when we say vertical alignment, we mean you start with high school and middle school and then elementary. And within a system like Roswell or Fulton County, you want to have vertical alignment in a school system where a kid can start learning in elementary school. And if they like it, guess what? They can enroll in that middle school program when they get there. And if they still like it, if they still love to build, they can enroll in that high school program. And if they still like it, they can get a great job with one of our employers. So that's the thing. When you have to say vertical alignment, that's what we're talking about. So, um, but that does conclude our third annual Crowd Pro Champion Awards program. I just want to thank uh, all of you for being here. Uh, I want to I want to thank a couple of individuals just quickly. Uh, Alan Olnick uh, wrote our script, and he he does all of our success stories. I got a little emotional now when um, I think it was Robert said he hopes one day be one of those success stories. Um, 
Al is the one that writes all of our success stories for us, and he, he wrote our script this morning, so Al, thank you for all that you do for SEFCA, and also Alexis Muir and Tina Robinson for organizing this year's program. There's a lot that goes into pulling something like this together, so I'm going to recognize Alexis and Tina. I also want to quickly recognize, we have a few of our board members here with us this morning, and I want to, I want to recognize them quickly. You've heard some of these names already. Mike Dunn with AGC Georgia is a SEFCA board member. Uh, also, Brad Hutto with Holder Construction. Brad, thank you for being here this morning. Uh, Scott Lawrence with McCarthy is one of our board members. Scott, thank you. Uh, Ray Rodriguez with CW Matthews. Ray, thank you for coming out this morning uh, and for all that CW Matthews does. Uh, and also, I saw Tim Tracy over here with Mr. Dunn. Tim Tracy is with Pyramid Masonry and another one of our board members. I want to make sure I'm not forgetting anyone. Any other board members? I hope I'm not. I'm trying to scan the audience. Can get everybody? I think that's everybody. Um, if you would like to learn more about SEPCA, our website is sepca.org, cefga.org. You can also follow us. We're on all the different social uh, channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. Check us out there. A lot of cool things are happening. Um, but And congratulations. If we can get one more round of applause for all of our board members. 